Marks. And the question is that the bill now be read a second time and give the call to the member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise uh, to support the passage of this piece of legislation uh, and to congratulate all parties. I stress that all parties that have been involved in getting it to this point, because as the digital age continues to revol revolutionise the way we work, communicate and engage with information, it's of course incredibly important that Australian Lords are made fit for the 21st century and to make sure not just that they're reflective and fit for the 21st century for some people, but reflective and fit for all people. And that's why making sure resources are available for people, regardless of their disability, is so important uh, to the spirit and health of our nation and to make sure that e the unrealised potential of every individual, whatever their circumstances, can be brought to life. Online resources have made material and services more accessible than ever for the general population. And it's crucial that the abundance of knowledge available to us is made accessible to all Australians, regardless of their disability or any impairment. Copyright law, as I've always been a strong advocate for, is important to get right. Copyright is central to making sure that uh, artistic creators and authors are able to uh, be remunerated for their achievements and their creations. Uh, nobody should ever be under an illusion about the important role it plays in helping support our artists and the avenues that they need. And content creators need to have their creative effects and economic rights properly respected, and particularly through the form of exclusive right of copyright. But of equal importance is also ensuring that copyright, copyright laws are flexible and contemporary and reflect the needs and demands of the modern age, particularly in the digital world, and to ensure content is able to be used by people with a disability and those people who need extra support within our community. Copyright is, has and always will be a vehicle and a mechanism to distribute content, not an inhibitor or a barrier. And that is what this bill seeks to implement. This bill will enhance access to copyrighted material through a number of amendments. It will help bring the education, libraries and archive sectors of Australia firmly into the digital age. As part of this, the bill will harmonise the preservation exceptions for copyright material in libraries, archives and key cultural institutions. And the former member was talking particularly about the importance of bringing to life the value and the cultural contri contribution of this country for all Australians, and for that I concur with him. It will also allow copyright material to be incorporated into educational assessments conducted online and set new standard terms of protection for published and unpublished materials and for crown copyright in original materials. The implications of this amendment and these simple change, seemingly simple changes, Deputy Speaker, are substantial. Most published material that is available worldwide is not presently accessible to people who are blind visually impaired or have a disability that affects the way a person reads, views, hears or comprehends comp copyrighted works. The bill's disability access provisions will put in place an amalgamated, flexible exception that organisations can then utilise to allow people with a disability to access said material. We owe it to the disability community and those people who do suffer from problems around particularly blindness to ensure Australia has the most flexible copyright framework that is available and possible. And if you think about which countries in the world are able to do so and to not just make content available but accessible to people regardless of any infliction or disability, it is us. And that is why we are a leader, we will continue to be a leader and we should be a leader. The measures in this bill are format neutral, meaning that Australians will have print disability will also benefit alongside technological advances and innovations today and into the future. The library and archive exceptions will allow libraries and institutions to archive with greater flexibility. Currently there are obsolete restrictions which prevent copies of published material being made unless the original has suffered damage, has deteriorated or is lost or stolen. This bill will remove these regulations and empower libraries and institutions to make content as accessible as possible. And red tape will also be stripped away in the education sector, because the bill seeks to streamline the educational statutory licence provisions for the copyrighted works and communication of works and broadcast for educational purposes, and permit the use of copyright material for online examinations. 
The reforms will also refine existing provisions relating to educa educational use of content in order to assist educators in licensing arrangements and negotiations for access to works. This will allow education institutions to take advantage of technology and expand the ways in which students can engage with content and examination material. More importantly, it isn't just a regulatory change but it is one, a legislative change, but it is one that has a human consequence because it expands the opportunity to engage young Australians regardless of their circumstances and to be able for them to, their minds to be broadened and be taken to other places where they can learn and, uh, and grow. At the heart of this legislation is a desire to free our institutions so that they may harness the technology of the 21st century and help our young people, our old people and our people with disabilities. Vision Australia estimates there are currently 357,000 people in Australia who are blind or have low vision. They project that this number could grow to 564 by 2030, which only reinforces why these sorts of sensible, pragmatic, human impact reforms are so essential. People aged between 15 and 64 years with disabilities have a lower participation uh, rate and almost double the unemployment rate compared to those without disability. We all have an obligation to ensure that people with a disability are given equitable access to educational resources wherever possible. And in the digital age, there is simply no reason why we shouldn't be doing more to give those with a people with disability the best chance and opportunity to live their full human potential. We are committed to ensuring that outdated legislation is never in the way of an individual's pursuits, particularly for those whose participation is already low. As a just society, as a just society, we have an obligation to make sure nobody is left behind due to their circumstances beyond their control. This bill is a reflection of the work of, uh, of multiple parties who have come together at different points to seek pragmatic reform. And for all those involved, I finished where I started, which is to congratulate them on the achievement, and I'm proud that the Turnbull government is implementing this change. Here, here. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for Goldstein for that contribution.